One, two, three. Hello and welcome back to the Mixing Music Podcast. I'm your host, DK. And with me today, our lovely co-host, Lou Moreno. He's not wrong. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, another, uh, another guest appearance from uh, the famous DJ Ice. Oh, yeah. Welcome, welcome back, welcome back. Me. We up in here. Okay, last one we interviewed you and we talked about kind of your come ups, your story, everything. And uh, this time it's gonna be a little bit different. We're gonna be a little bit more technical. Oh, and I wanna tech? argue I wanna like I wanna argue about this. I wanna argue about stuff. Let's fight? talk about eight oh eights. And you mixing eight oh eights. I don't think we've done an episode specifically on eight oh eights yet. There's Mortal Kombat about to happen. So first off, initial thoughts. When I say eight oh eights and mixing, what do you think? Man, hell yeah. <laughs> hell yeah. So is, is, is mixing the 808 the favorite part of the It's the mix? best part of the beat. Oh, yeah. Best part of the beat is either going to be your kick drum or your 808. Your hi-hat pattern could be cool. Don't get me wrong. It could offset. It could do some crazy things. You might catch me off guard if you got a fire hi-hat pattern. But if your 808 not wild or it's not subby enough or you don't got nothing booming, then, like, where's the heartbeat of your song? Yeah. Where are you going to show me where I need to bob my head to? How are you going to show the women where they need to dance at? Like, how are you going to show us how to get the rhythm of how how you spitting your lyrics? Like, But have you ever heard me mix a kazoo? I feel like you'd be blown away. Oh, my gosh. A kazoo could favorite? be fire. It However, the if the kazoo ain't got a fire 808 underneath it, a kazoo's just going to be like... Yeah, man, we heard that. We heard that kazoo in the mix, but I mean, you know what? If anybody could ever make a kazoo in 808, I believe it to be Nels or Ice. <laughs> I believe it to be Nels first, though. <laughs> <laughs> that was crazy. <laughs> That's so awesome. I'm definitely sampling, bro. Right after though, I'm coming right back. With <laughs> but I'm only doing an FL because FL, FL the drums hit harder. You know, so, I've been yeah. hearing about that, but let you know, I'm gonna transition with that too because. Uh, we have a couple questions that are out here that people want to know, and uh, one of them is the age-old debate of uh, soft clippers. Yo, listen, listen. The soft clipper be booming. Be metro booming? Metro booming. It be it be south side and all of it. Listen, <laughs> the soft clipper be booming if you know how to use a soft clipper. Like, if you use it for an effect, you're going to be great. If you just slapping it on and praying, you're probably going to have a bad time when it gets down to mixing stages. Mm-mm. But if you know how to use if you know how to use distortion and all that, yeah. you're gonna be fine. You treat it like with taste, like how a guitarist or a bassist would. Yeah, because that's why it's an, it's another instrument in itself. You try to bring out certain tonalities of it and all that. So the soft clipper brings out a little something in the brighter end. You feel me? Yeah, give you a little bit more crunch. Everybody's listening. Everybody's listening. Everybody's listening to it on knees, so it's like, does it matter? It's like, enough an iPhone for those of you who can't see that. It's an iPhone. Y'all gonna listen to it on these, so like. And if you have one like mine, DK's heard it, and we're always Yo, really disappointed. In my yours phone. sounds like your your thing ripped, bro. The paper yeah, that it, was it the ripped speaker the fat is fat one, is, and the speakers couldn't handle it. Is a broken ear canal of a speaker phone. That's what yeah. that phone is. But Yo, you know what? That sounds what like I it's really drowning. Know. I don't my care phone is the singing. NS10 of phones. <laughs> the NS10 of phones. <laughs> yeah. So if you want to hear. An 808 cut through a mix, you got to get it to cut through my phone. Hey, so I got this reference point right here. If it don't get through this phone, it ain't going to hit in the club. <laughs> you know what? Uh, somebody once told me their, their reference point for, for a sub monitor was. Hmm. He said, I go to the bathroom at my house, and while the 808 is hitting, I'll look at the toilet bowl and see if I, I can see the ripples happening in my own home. <laughs> he wanted to see some Jurassic Park shit in his toilet. Yo, in order I to make sure the 808 hit hard enough, I'm about, to cause I just found a whole new way to hit the toilet. Yo, actually, I just found a whole new way to check my 808s. Put a cup of water. For, for me, dude, the ultimate check for me. Shout out to Macon for this one. Oh, Every God. time oh, I'm God. mixing drums or 808s or bass of some kind, low end in the studio, and I get it like to that point where you're like, okay, this is good. Like right when it hits right. Either volume or EQ or some shit, Macon will say, "Damn, DK, that's hitting so hard. I gotta pee now." Like, like <laughs> it's like that bass just resonates, and he's like, "I gotta pee, bro." <laughs> and I'm like, "That's when the bass is right." 
<laughs> so, and MP levels. That's crazy. <laughs> man, so one of my favorite things to do on like 808 mixing, because I know a lot of people like to use limiters and things like that, which is, you know, it's cool with me, but uh, just run it through tubes. You know, tube, like if tube cool. emulations or hardware tube, whatever you got. Um, but voice, one of my favorite of things. Yeah, voice, oh, <laughs> voice of God. Voice of God. <laughs> but um, one of the cool things was that um, I used to have a Demeter preamp, which is basically a recording preamp specifically for bass instruments. Mm. So it only had like an instrument input, no mic pre, nothing like that. But it was a nice tubed one that I actually used to take everybody's 808s, run it through that, and it would actually give enough tube saturation to where the bass just cut through that much better, but it still had that really really deep resonance that like you know a good 808 when you can feel it in your chair when it when mm -hmm. you're just sitting down and even if you don't hear it the room just shook but in a very natural yeah, those, way like those, you those, can tell those be the dangerous 808 those be the dangerous ones so that's those are the rick ross 808s so that segues right into our second question um by an anonymous intern uh, uh, the second question asked is, um, how do you make an 808 stand out in a mix? So, boom. And I learned this from the homie Matt Briggs. Y'all go follow Matt Briggs. Matt Briggs fire. Matt Briggs, I'd watch him mix his beats and bro gain staged the most amazing way. He took everything to zero. He took everything to like below zero. Like he took everything to nothing. Hmm. And then brought out the melody, and then brought out the 808, and then fit, and then tucked everything else, tucked everything else in. So the way that I kind of see mixing now when I approach it is the same way I kind of look at weed rolling. Mm -hmm. You laughing, but wait, wait, yeah, just, wait just wait, just wait till I break. Come on, this is gonna be like the this new version good. of just, Pensado's suit. This is wait, starting to feel like wait till uh, I, Joe, wait till, Joe Rogan. Wait till I break it down. So <laughs> boom, I'm trying to smoke. What am I gonna need? I'm gonna need maybe some pavers. I'm gonna need some leaf. I'm gonna need some filters. I'm gonna need what else? I'm gonna need. I'm gonna need some, some more weed. I'm gonna need some weed. I'm gonna need some. I'm gonna need some fire. I need a lighter. It's a fact. Mm -hmm. So boom, I, I got all these ingredients. So I got my vocals. I got my background harmonies. I got oh, I got this ad lib track that he did. Blah blah blah. So I got all my ingredients and everything like that. And I roll splits. That's why yeah. I said the leaf and the paper for everybody. The fuck this nigga need both? Oh, uh, let me put you on something. So <laughs> get my little get my little fronto, get my little leaf going. Boom, cut that. Roll up my filter. Boom, that's ready. Grind up my weed. Weed's ready. Grab my paper. Crumple my paper first. Get it nice and ready. This you is all crumple. this is all what I'm doing in Pro Tools with vocals, with with beats, with with stems and everything like that. I'm tucking, I'm gain staging, Remember, I'm no doing... no stems in weed, though. Doing all that. No, we, we, we ain't doing stems in the weed. <laughs> We're doing stems in the session, so... <laughs> so I got everything, I got everything in order. Now what is my job? I got everything, all right, you got everything in formation. Now you got to tuck. I'm going to tuck these vocals in. I'm going to tuck these vocals in. The best is the beat. The beat is what I'm considering the bass for all this. Yeah. So I'm going to tuck. Keep tucking. Keep tucking. Ooh, I got a shape. That's a shape. Roll. Link, put out the track. Smoke that joint. Smoke that joint. You feel me? Because that joint is fire. It's that simple. So you, <laughs> you get the beat. The beat could be a bagwood. It could be a paper. It could be a front or your leaf, whatever like that. You got you got your bass. You put your weed, your vocals in there. Then you tuck that motherfucker in there until it's perfect. And then you got a solid track right there. You can smoke that. That's audio dope. And I think that the, uh, I like I, that. I, the one of my biggest takeaways from that is actually the fact that for a lot of people that do roll often... It's kind of a combination of you're not really paying too much attention. Like you're almost blissful. Like you're not like trying to like measure it. Like it's science. Oh, yeah. It's like like it's, if you're trying to be a you. scientist, like if you're a maniacal roller, you weird first off. Yeah. So if you're like trying to make it super sciencey <laughs> or like really analytical about it, it doesn't work. And the second thing is, like you said, the shape sometimes is different every time. Every and time. And that's okay. That's okay. Everything will smoke the same. Yeah. And yeah. I think that's kind of like, so w according to drums... So you're saying you make it fit in by matching in the volumes, like getting that volume. I'm starting right if you. So first off, it's sound selection. At first, when I was like 
starting to come up. I had no idea what sound selection was. It's I was like, yo, man, I got these do. sounds from YouTube, and I'm finna go up. Or I got these sounds from whatever site I did. That's it. That's how I was with drums. I was like, I'm gonna go get a drum set. I, mean, I don't really know anything. Ooh, about you came home with that. Fi- you came home with that Fisher mm. Price drum oh, set. Oh yeah, the Toys R Us. And tried to get it. You tried to go. Yo. Yeah. You tried and to then, go Beatles on that John. Then I went and I was like, cool. I'm just gonna get the Pow Pro $100 mic kit for like 13 mics. Mm-hmm. That should be amazing. That's gonna be great. And then I listened to the recordings. I'm like, what does it sound like? Doo-doo. Sounds like disappointment. What is this? <laughs> sound selection, people, is a big thing. Whether you're recording samples, if you're recording live drums, please educate yourself on what it is exactly makes a record sound great. And part of that, actually, the majority part of that when it comes to production, aside from being creative, is having good tone. Whether it's good, good kicks. Good 808. Yo, good you guitar. gotta tune. You gotta tune your 808. You gotta tune your samples. You got It's the same reason I say that not everybody that thinks they can sing should be a singer. Not because you can't sing or you have a weird tone, but realistically speaking, sometimes you need to find a unique sound for yourself. It could have effects. It could have delays. It could have anything. But you don't have to be Celine Dion every time. Yeah, and I think it's actually really important to bring up that. Not every tone is for every song. Like, exactly. For example, some songs, it slaps like really subby with no harmonics, just like really low, right? Some songs, it's like, I got no low end and it's distorted as crap and it sounds amazing. You know, like, yeah. And it doesn't work for every So it's like, sound selection doesn't mean you, got, you have one kick drum that knocks real hard or one 808. No, yeah. you also, that means like reading you have to the know song. How to like fit the vibe. Fitting into it, yeah. Yeah. You gotta think about it. You can't just be coming with the same kick drum on every joint. Like, bam. All right, you're not I gonna have you, Van get Halen you. solo over her. I get, you, I get your sound, but I know you got two kicks. Yo, <laughs> it was about this time last year when Nels came up to me and we high fived at, at Cold House, and he came in for the night and I left for the evening. And he said, "Yo, DK, you gotta listen to this kick drum." I said, "Yeah," and he's showing me this kick drum sample. And he's like, "Yeah, that used to be a synthesizer." And I was like, where like that used to be some sort of like, this used to be a sample or something like that, and he like turned it into a kick drum or an eight oh eight. It was disgusting. Oh, you should see the things Ice is doing with the sampling. So tell us, tell us some of your secrets. So we don't really talk too much about production. What do That's you uh, terrible. recommend? Why? About because it's a mixing podcast. But like, but this is a good we, point. But this is a good point. What? Let's bring we a production. We did have an episode about like the we stages talk about of production, production and how to actually go about making a record. But you know what? It's good to have the view of a producer. Who's uh, who? One is actively getting paid to produce. Mm-hmm. Two, me and DK are actively getting paid to engineer, so we can understand production from the point of view as an engineer. Mm-hmm. But you really know what it is to be a producer in the room, getting the artist from point A to B. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. So that's I feel like that's the insight you can offer more than we can. Yeah, not producing from a mixer's yeah. mindset, but a producer from a pr- producing from a producer's mindset, a mm-hmm. creator. Yeah. Because you really make the records that we engineer. Most definitely. You know what I mean? So tell, tell us some of uh, what's kind of your go-to thing, or how do you like to start, or what's your system, your flow? I start with melody first. Melody. Anybody can start with drums. That's cool. Drums slap. <laughs> <laughs> it's just a fact. Drums, you can get lost in drums for hours trying to, you back in the day, make a fire drum loop. Now you got to sit all day and find a sample that matched that intense dr- drum loop that you yeah. just made. That could take hours. You're going to get tired of the drums and things like that. If I start with the melody, I could feel everything out before I go and make things, you know, staples. Mm-hmm. Before I go in and I'm fully, you know, working with fire and I'm burning things. I can kind of just test the water with things like, ooh, how's this hi-hat swing? Yeah. How's yeah. this how's this rim shot sound here if I were to place it? Oh, I don't like it there. I'm going to take it and put it over here. Yeah. And you know what? I feel like that just goes back to the old school uh, relationships of uh, bass and drummer. Realistically, like the bass player's got the groove of the song. He may come up with the concept and be like, yo, give me four to the floor real quick. Like, let's hear what's going on. And the drummer would be like, oh, it'd also be dope if we actually were to do it with like these kind of tom patterns starting out and then switch And then over. switch to this pocket. And- yeah, yeah. And that's how like a lot of producers are really their own uh, bass and drummer relationship, but it has to start with the melody. Mm-hmm. Because same thing. Imagine the drummer just walks in and be like, yo, I want to play this pattern. Okay, well, 
All right, let me figure out a baseline for that now. And the bass player may be tinkering around a lot, but it's a lot faster production if it's more the bass player walks in with the melody and says, mm-hmm. hey, like, what do you think of this? I kind of like this groove. Like, I was thinking it can go this way, it can go that way, it can go that way. But a drummer can't walk up to a bass player and be like, hey, here's four to the floor. I got this idea for a melody, but it's that on, that's the only melody I made this beat for. You know what I mean? That's a fact. It's a, a sad day in those days. It really is, because that's it's just the way it goes. Yeah. So when you're working in the in the room, you know everybody wants the 808 loud. Mm-hmm. You're producing in the room with the artist, obviously. Yo, artists hate why... artists hate me first off because I don't make things. Your 808s I'll... are the loudest fucking thing in the room. I don't make things loud until they leave. So uh... like during the whole session, every artist would complain to me and be like, "Yo, turn it up, turn it up, turn it up," and I'm like. Yeah, you're not finna compromise my ears for this session. Yeah. Like, I enjoy what I do, but at the same time, I know that I'm only going to be able to hear for so long because of the job profession that I chose. Like I said, I've been doing this since I was nine. So, my ears, I don't know how long these Jones is going to stay crisp. So, for right now, I'm going to try to preserve them for as long as I can. I mix really, really low so that my mastering engineers have room to do what they do best. Dope. Yeah. I love that. That's actually the way you kind of realize. But nah, artists hate like artists. Artists hate me. So I'll make it loud. Like when they leave, I'll turn the eight. Yeah, my eight oh eights are loud after the fact. But when I'm making the beat, you are gonna hear at least fifty complaints. Like, yo, can you turn it up? Or during recording, yo, can you turn the beat up? And I'm just like, yo, man, you're not finna overpower this beat and overwrap this this song. Yeah. Just so you can be heard. Like you can be heard when you get out the booth, and then you can get hype, and then we could we could celebrate and throw throw a whole party, but. Until then, yeah, you're going to stay at around, like, I think I'm maxing out at, like, <laughs> negative 12. <laughs> yeah, really? that's yeah. honestly, that's yeah, the same for me. I'm maxing yeah. out at, like, negative 12 dB when I'm, when I'm tracking. Yeah, what's funny is uh, a lot of people talk about, like, where's the sweet spot of, like, uh, tracking vocals, sweet spot for tracking, like, live bass or whatever. But the reality is, I always tell people it's case by case, so what my favorite thing to do is just... Drop the two track that they provided me all the way down to where Yo. when the vocals are hitting like minus uh, 18, minus 16, minus 14 max. That's considered nine, loud. 12, yeah, that for me is like, hey, man, you're going to have to start turning down the fader on the vocal. Like, I prefer that because it gives me a ton of headroom. And, you know, like you you asked me to work with Ari because my history with like Keisha and other dynamic like female vocalists where it's like. You need all the headroom for days. All the headroom you can get cause yeah. is, but because the vocals finna fluctuate. But because of that, I've noticed that these same like uh, more dynamic vocalists will ask for their headphones to be louder because I have to keep their mics low enough to not distort on the way in. So what do we end up doing? We put some like near zero latency limiter on the send to their headphones or we just do an external really loud cue box for them the cue box so be if they stupid want, yeah I, i'm always walking into the booth like Yo, how, how is this thing how is this away? how is this thing so loud yeah it's like how did y'all listen like this like the drummer has his volume lower <laughs> like how many headphones have we broken this month like the last couple months, it was like three pairs or Let's something see. like that. Let's see, two Audio Technicas, a Bear Dynamic, and if they, if you get them so loud that they break. Yeah, yeah that's guys, impressive. I get the high resistance Bears, the two fifty ohms. They're meant to be really hard to get loud enough for a reason, not because you I also want run you to have your headphones labs. louder, but they actually have a better sound. But the sad part is. I've never actually seen anyone except for like a client in the booth break one. Like I've never met an engineer that broke one. I've never met a producer that broke one, but it's always in the booth. You are running that you through find the, out. You're running through the little labs though. Man, shout out to to <laughs> uh, Jonathan Little from Little Labs. He makes an amazing headphone amp Bruh. called the Mono Tour. And I gotta say, it's the only headphone amp that I guarantee my, oh my clients gosh, I just will got have that. their ears bleed. Oh the my Mono gosh. Tour. I just got that. Yeah, because you can. Uh, the amazing thing about it is this: I keep a monitor. <laughs> I actually keep two with me at all times. Like I have one that was at Keisha's house, and I have one at Nick Cannon's studio. And the only reason that I have them there is because they always ask, like, "Why doesn't my headphones sound great?" But then you see they only got like a fifty dollar headphone amp. Yeah. You know, or they're running through like cheap cables and everything. There's always some skimping going on here and there at everybody's studios, but. 
when I finally tried this headphone down bow, I'm like, this is perfect for the hip hop clients and where, the R and B clients where it's they so want amazing. bleeding headphones every time. Because it can get so loud, I've watched them destroy the headphone with that headphone amp before they actually ever asked me again, it's such a can great I amp. get it louder? Dang. It's such That's a great so amp. crazy. I've, uh, yeah. Be careful with your ears. I think <laughs> uh, DJ Ice brought up a good point. You know, take care of yourself, your ears. I'm not finna max out my ears just because you want it loud right now. Like, we're not going to go back and forth on this. It's not negotiable. It's nothing personal. Am I it's getting just, hazard pay when we're loud? I just want to know, like, when I can't hear my kids scream for me, like, damn, are you finna pay the price of this? Like, like how does this work? Like, is this yeah. fall under you because you had, you had that session and you were trying to break my speakers too? Like, yeah, I just want to know. Yeah. Respect you, gear people. I just want to know. Yeah. So let's see. Uh, more more things about the 808s and the drums. Uh, within the hip hop culture, mm -hmm. let's talk about uh, acoustic drums or samples or something mm -hmm. versus uh, digital like 808s. Yo, Jake One got some of the hardest snares that I think I've ever heard in my life. Hmm. Jake, yo, Jake One's percussion kits. And Does drum he do kits acoustic? And... Or yes, bro. He's nasty. It's amazing. That's I'm wild. I'm more of a live kick guy, but synth eight oh eight. Really, mm. because I, I I grew up with metal, so I'm so used to. Wait, hold on, hold on. Wait, wait. Set. You said a synth eight oh eight. Hold on, I'm trying to think. An acoustic eight oh eight, just like recording no, acoustic, acoustic kick and synth eight oh eight. No, but I'm saying like, how do you make a acoustic eight oh eight? Just like pitching it down. Actually, that would be a good well, idea. If you really think about what. Uh, what an 808 is it's just a, it's a sine wave you know what I mean but, literally well not just a sine wave it's, it's really just a synthetic bass note uh, created by a bunch of different waves but it's but also percussive it's also percussive but if you think about it like if you got anything and just filtered it out like let's say you get anything a truck turn driving into an down the road and it's shaking the road you know it's got a lot of bass content to it if you were to filter everything above 60 hertz on that and then set that to like center C. Yeah. And then just play it's that. That's your 808. Up. You there just you made an acoustic 808 from a truck driving past you. Those heavy things are shaking my walls and I can record it and make an 808 out of it. So so the question is, how do you treat differently uh, digital drums versus acoustic drums in a hip hop mix? Like, which one is... Man, listen, if the drum's going to slap, the drum's finna slap. So I'm finna do whatever I can to make them shit slap. I don't care if it's if it's synthetic. I don't care if the motherfucker was made by Van Halen himself. You feel like it don't matter to me. Yeah. The drum sample is a drum sample, whether wherever you got it from. It could be recorded on a little iPhone speaker. It could be recorded on this microphone right here, provided to us by Latin Audio. Latin... Ooh. Latin. It don't matter. That's that's my theme song for them. I'm sorry, guys. I'm a terrible singer. Can we auto tune that in post? We got yeah, you. Yeah, yeah. Go. in post we got you. you well, know I don't what know key what key that. We'll, I'll put some we'll try it on mixed it in key. We'll fi we'll figure it out. Ooh. Okay, auto key. Auto but key. uh, shout out to Antares too, one of our other sponsors. You feel me? Yeah. But uh, okay, so what do you, what do you think about uh compression on digital drums? Because in acoustic kits, a compression is because the snare head is never going to be the same. Bro, what does yeah. a compressor do? Exactly. I don't use compressors on samples like, where it's the same what's velocity. A compressor? compressor is really just going to control dynamic range, but when a sample is the same volume all the way around, like you really don't need a compressor. You don't need it. But sometimes it distorts. It's make it louder if you want it to. Sometimes it adds that get a little more I'm not, compress I'm not compressing shit. Yeah. You know what I tend to do more than anything on percussion? I actually do minimal compression. I actually do more transient designing. Transient designing has... I've yeah. just, adding, I just like got, release, I adding, adding, all that yeah. kind of stuff. But my favorite one is Transgressor 2 from BOZ uh, because you can actually do frequency-dependent uh, transient design. So you can actually make like 200 hertz to 400 hertz on the kick drum resonate longer, but you can also kill the decay at like 60 hertz. So you have more of a woofy kick or you could do the opposite. Have more resonance at 80 hertz and drop everything on the on the release frequencies around like 200 hertz and pass. And then now you got this long tail kick or long tail resonant like 808. But realistically speaking, like frequency dependent transient designing is a form of compression. 
but it's a very unique way. It's almost like EQing the actual performance. I see it as, of the I see it as like top end design type yeah. type of deal. I'm rocking with the SPL joint. Oh yeah, mm-hmm. with the one from Plug and Alliance. No, which one? I think the official one. Did oh, oh yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. And what about uh? Okay, so we're actually gonna. Come I just up got it. A new question here. But uh, what are your favorite? Like we like. Bro, to how distort. could you read that? I got my glasses on. That shit time. says best what? Best coloring method. So nigga, you need what are your best f- handwriting <laughs> method. What the <laughs> fuck? <laughs> this shit is dying. Bro, <laughs> <laughs> I'm this nigga picked. The, he had sixty four out of the box that he could have picked, to, and he picked the Dave. lightest, the lightest <laughs> sharpie that he could. Bro, he's not writing on this. <laughs> oh my goodness! But uh, yeah, a whole what? white box. <laughs> FedEx box. FedEx box that he could have. <laughs> so, what are some favorite ways to distort or try to find a different color or tone? Man, throw it, throw whatever on it. Uh, decapitator is my favorite. Currently. Decapitator. Yo, Which man, says listen, can sound toys. Sound things. toys. This almost Black Friday, so I'm finna. We finna talk. Cause oh I need, yeah, sound I need, toys. I need the bundle again. Y'all playing games with my emotions. They actually have. Uh, did you see that they released like what they call the effects rack? It's basically yeah, I'm the not, majority no, of their no, plugins. Not, not doing it. No, no, no! I need the Yo, standalones. It's, it's, no, no, the standalones are gonna are are still gonna work if you get the bundle, but they also include effects rack now in the bundle. So if you get the bundle, you'll get all the standalones, but they include effects rack. We gonna see. So it's just like so you can chain all of the different exactly buttons. like if you wanted to throw that on like some vocal throws, you can add decapitator and echo boy and all that kind of stuff and do it all in one plug in versus doing it in three or four. Yeah, I'd rather do it in three or four. So decapitator, how do you gotcha. like to use deta- decapitator? Um depends on what it is. Uh since we're talking like production on bass, I actually like to just set it to punish automatically. Like I really want to hear don't, an if you don't form. set it to punish, what are you yeah. doing? Because you can always blend it down, but Punish is really giving you a very obvious show of what you're you're choosing between it's like Neve or the API emulations and all that. But uh, I really like their tube emulation for 808s, uh, especially like super deep sub synthy ones. And then taking the mix knob down on that, but you can play with the darkness or or brightness on control on it in the center. That way you can really shape, like, okay, am I getting really deep on the 808, or am I actually making it a little bit brighter, wanting it to cut through a little more and filtering out a little bit of that low end? Voice of God is also great for that. Voice of God. Uh, Yeah, Voice of God on 808s. Mm. Yeah, add Decapitator and Voice of God uh, right behind it. It's really good. Done. Yeah. What about you, Ice? Bro, I'll be cheating. I'll be using so many things. You'll be using lo-fi? Distort lo-fi. Yo, distort. man, I'm I'm one of I think I'm one of the only chosen ones that don't use lo-fi. Thank you. Using low, I I be seeing it in sessions and I just be like, yo, niggas is weird. The, the saturation just, is weird on that. It's like y'all is all right. I guess like different strokes for different folks. Like I guess it's not I my have. thing. So I rock with I rock with the uh, I be rocking with stock shit. The Sands the Sands amp. Oh, the Sans oh, amp. The, oh, what is it, the, the base PS one A. Yo, I have no idea. But yeah, it's in, but it's in Pro Tools. And it's amazing. Yeah, yeah I rock, it's stock. I rock with that. I've never tried um, that on anyway. It's if we talk, really if we talk in non stock, it's amazing. Mm-hmm. I've been able to not use the capitator because I use that. Um, I rock with Max Base, mm-hmm. R Base. Mm-hmm. And I'll give y'all one more. Let me think. If I, I'll give, I give one for the FL people. Learn that soft clipper. Soft clipper. That soft clipper. See, it came full circle back to soft clipper. Learn the soft clipper. Please learn it properly, guys. We we the, get the a mix, lot of files. FL, that are just FL kind of more gives you it than, gives you a mix knob. Mm, it gives you yeah. a mix knob. You can dial it in on how much. It's basically like you doing like parallel compression. Yeah. That's exactly what it is, but in just a more colorizing form. And so as we wrap up the show, uh, I want to say the last thing is. My favorite, if you're listening right now, for 808s, I'm going to throw in the Black Box, HG2, oh, so good. and the Vertigo, VS, VCS3. Can we throw a third? Yes. Ozone 9. Ozone 9s, just Ozone in general, they're yeah. saturator. They're saturator, the fact that you can choose different types of saturation um, frequency as you choose it. All right, like, I all like right, that. All right, since y'all throwing these, I'll throw in the T-Rex. 
Oh yeah, T Rex is great. T Rex yeah. is actually dope. I've never used yeah. T Rex. Yet. T Rex actually, slaps. Yeah, T Rex is actually a really cool tool to actually have in your arsenal, especially if you're starting out. Like they're actually pretty cheap. So before the the camera cuts out, we got to end the episode. Uh, you can find us on YouTube as well as listening to the podcast. Thank you for listening. Please leave us comments, subscribe, whatever, follow everything, all the above. Find Ice on Instagram at. DJ Ice with two E's dot D- TFO. Dot TFO. TFO. That's right. That's right. And we'll have his link in the description below as well again. Thank you so much for listening, my friends. Happy mixing and stay saucy. One, two, three. <laughs>If you'd like to take advantage of my free guides and online videos, please check out links.dkmixes.com. That's links.dekeimixes.com.